Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Friday, April 19, 2013, and this is an update on the uh, lens mitigation project, I guess I'm going to call it. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to just say that there are a few of you out there who have been kind enough to donate very generous amounts to my travel fund to head out to the uh, Bedini Lindemann conference at which Eric Dollard will be speaking and which I would really like to attend. Um, so thank you very much for that. I really haven't been terribly proactive at soliciting donations for that trip, but I'm going to do so now because uh, I think it's rather important that, uh, that I have the opportunity to actually meet this person and to discuss some of my ideas and concepts with him. Uh, if any of you were as disappointed and let down with the uh, crowd-funded trip that sent Sterling Allen to Geneva, Switzerland to watch the Yieldies flop, um, what can I tell you? We called it from the very beginning, and, uh, you know, I, I've been telling my fans all along, if you want to see some progress, send somebody who knows what they're doing to meet somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. And uh, that's me, and I would like to meet Eric Dollard. So if you will help me do that, I'm going to tell you exactly how much I predict it's going to cost me to do that. Um, I've been researching air flights, the cheapest round-trip air flight I can get, out of Hartford or Newark is about $600 round trip. Um, the cheapest hotel that I can get for several nights is about $400. I will need a rental car, meals. I'm estimating about $2,000 to, um, to fund the trip. So I'm going to officially start asking you now. If you would like to see me go to the Benini Lindemann Conference, I need, I need a rally of support fairly quickly because the uh, available empty seats for the conference are dwindling. The first hundred went pretty quickly, but the, uh, the last 50 are, are going more slowly. The last email I received said that there were 39 seats left. So um, it has been open for quite a while. It is a fairly select group of people who attend these conferences, and I think this year I would like to be one of them. So if you will help me do that, I will go on your behalf, and I will listen to Eric Dollar, and I'll take back whatever information that I can and apply it to what I'm doing right now. If in the event that I somehow do not succeed at raising enough funds to get out to uh, the conference, as long as we're reasonably close, I will fund the difference. And uh, if, if I don't get anywhere near where I need to be, then uh, I'll just throw in the towel. But I will tell you that the, the funds that you do donate towards the, uh, the travel to Idaho will go towards funding actual uh, hardware towards building the projects. I don't foresee that happening. I hope you will support my effort to get out to Idaho to the Bedini Lindemann Conference. And uh, I thank you all for your support. So now, uh, here is my update on the lens mitigation project. Okay, so here's what I wanted to show you. First of all, this is my revised uh, rotating magnetic cylinder with my uh, magnets that I can re rearrange in any way that I want. I now have the Arduino connected to the driver circuit and I'm able to uh, incrementally make changes to the, uh, the dwell and the delay of the pulses going to the pancake coil. Uh, there's only a few thousandths of an inch between the pancake coil and the spinning drum. This is my analog DC ammeter that measures my input current. And if you remember, I've got a, uh, I made myself a couple of half sphere coils that I wanted to test. Right, And as one of the tests that I wanted to do, I wanted to play around with a, a spherical neodymium magnet inside this half sphere. And in fact, not just inside the half sphere, but I want to take and create an entire sphere with the 
spinning magnet inside and I want to also have a counterpoise wound half sphere uh, as kind of like the uh, the Kapanazi primary coil. So playing around with some different ideas. So uh, I, I ordered from Applied Magnetics, that's uh, magnetforless.com, a couple of neodymium magnets. This is the first neodymium magnet. Here's the sphere, okay? And you can see, ouch. Put the other magnet away, Z. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Now it's focused, all right? You can see I've marked the polarities on this. The black line represents the boundary between the north and the south. Red is north, blue is south. And with a standard cubical magnet, uh, if you attach a magnet to a piece of plate steel, what you will get is you will find that you have the strongest attraction to the plate steel when you have both poles facing, uh, touching the, the steel. So you have the boundary portion of the magnet against the steel and you have north and south pulling against the steel and it will give you the greatest attraction. But what's unique about the sphere, and I have to be careful how I do this when I show it to you, is that unlike a rectangular magnet, if I go to attach the sphere, all right, I'm going to attach it with the boundary layer perpendicular to the metal plate. Okay, yeah, it, it sticks, but watch this. Okay, it really wants to be one pole or the other against the metal plate. All right, it doesn't want to rest in the middle. The strongest pull is directly tangent. I'm sorry. Strongest pull is perpendicular to the poles rather than perpendicular to the boundary. And the same is true of this neodymium cylinder magnet that I that I bought. Okay, so I let go and it really it wants to it wants to find the pole rather than find the boundary between the between them. That is very much unlike a rectangular bar magnet. Very much unlike a rectangular bar magnet. That's one of the observations that I wanted to point out to you. And the other thing that I wanted to show you, now this, uh, incidentally, this test jig here that I have, that I have I've had this up as high as 15,000 RPM, uh, actually 15,150 RPM was my maximum. And I got that speed by using alternating poles on the, on the magnets inside the drum. Uh, but I don't want to use alternating poles on my magnetic assembly because I want to be able to counterbalance the magnetic field with the, um, with the coils that I test against the device. Now, the, the goal here is I'm going to take, when you, when you place a load on the pancake coil or you short circuit the pancake coil and you try to bring it near the spinning drum, what you end up with is a repelling force that pushes the, uh, the coil assembly away from the drum. Okay, so as you are trying to produce power with the coil and the, and the drum is spinning, it creates a counter force and a repelling force that pushes it away. I figure what I want to do is now I want to be able to counterbalance that with a permanent magnet or a ring magnet on the back side of the pancake coil, very similar to the way we did with the, uh, the ferrite cores on the Mueller project. And with a specific load placed on the pancake coil and a given strength magnet on the, uh, on the back side of the pancake coil, I should be able to find a spot that counterbalances perfectly and yet still produces power. 
And if, uh, if I can find that sweet spot with that specific load being placed on the coils, then I believe we can extract energy without creating the lens effect on the rotating magnetic, magnetic assembly. Here's the test that I really wanted to show you though, okay? Um, I'm going to put this cylinder magnet in my Dremel and I want you to listen to how much of a lens drag effect I end up with when I place this spinning magnet at full speed inside my half sphere coil short circuited. All right, just listen to this. Just Quite a bit of lens drag, as you would expect, and the coil won't gets warm because we're inducing a lot of current in these windings. Here's the exciting part. I'm going to do that same experiment now with the spherical magnet. Incidentally, I have this mounted on a golf tee, which ended up being a perfect fit for the, uh, the chuck assembly on the Dremel. And it's wood, it's non-magnetic, it's perfect. All right, so here we go. Here's the neodymium sphere. Do you hear how much of a difference in the drag, how much more lens drag I get with the neodymium sphere? Not only do I get more drag, I get much more induced current. So it's, it's much more efficient at inducing current into the winding. And I, also, and I also get the repelling force much further away from the coil when I do this. I'm starting to get it out here. I'm inducing as much current out here Actually, I'm inducing quite a bit of current out here There's very little lens, eff very little lens effect out here, but when I get it inside and it practically stalled the Dremel. Now why is this exciting? I got more lens effect. Yes, I got more lens effect. And if I can, if I can correctly identify what is creating the enhanced lens effect, we should be able to work in the opposite direction to counterbalance the lens effect and, and harness the energy without lens. And that's where I'm going. That's where I'm going with this. So, yeah, uh, I've got some things to try. And um, progress continues. So, nothing earth-shattering to report yet. But hopefully soon. So I apologize for presenting to you such a messy workbench. Uh, I have not had time to, to clean up the workshop. I've got stuff actually strewn all over the floor that you don't see on camera and it's kind of making me crazy right now. 
I need to spend some time organizing here again. But uh, I will get around to that. The weather is warming up and, uh, and uh, good times ahead. So that's all for now. Thank you all for watching. I hope you will rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And as always, peace.